Our emojis, um, I went through a factual tropical oasis type of uh, explanation. We did a lot the past, how the, the statute was set up, and how many people have voted for the statute. With a third of the people who have voted Mucho, no, twee derde de erin en dan tot apte mucho eens con el statut, dus van begin el statut tabo tati un pari democracia um, deficits, ma pin point e quater of cinco diferente artículo nan den el statut kuta, kuta un tiki um, pain punte nan pe persona nan kuno a uh, uh, tabo tati e go enough um, belief in el statut, un ta main si mi papi un tiki inglés, pero ya, yeah. and so, then I brought it home to present time, how we can prove from the time that when the statute was made, to Suriname leaving, to Aruba going status aparte, to us still talking about the Schisgilla regeling, to us talking about the Coho and now the Slavery, we brought some local facts. And to kick on my, my pinpoint is that no se marten, no se hace dos cosas. No está en un fundación que se llama Proso Aliga, y se took Holland to court, and Holland ex, um, acknowledged the fact that they never decolonized the countries. And St. Martin also took Holland to the UN, petitioned the, the Holland to the UN, and there too they mentioned that you know it's it's there it's uh, the democratic deficits are sound, and that um, you also have um, you know discrimination against the people during the COVID times. Thus, based on that, we should now look at all these fights and all these facts holistically and ask ourselves, do we want to remain in the kingdom? Do we want to fix it to give the full-fledged um, autonomy based on international laws? Or do we want to get out? And in the end, I propose it's a dysfunctional kingdom, so we should consider getting out. That's my uh, proposal, but it's not for me to decide. It's something we need to sit down as four countries and, and really have a discussion, look at the facts and decide how we're going to do it. Are we going to make it, fix it so we can be for once equal and abide by international laws or do we plan to dismantle it? I think we need to sit down, the four countries really need to sit down because I think we're all over the place right now. The COHO has made it worse for the countries. The last two years it has been a very divisive topic and it has left a bad taste in our, in our I know for a fact, in St. Martin's um, mouth, in the people of St. Martin and how we were forced to, you know, forced down with these conditions. I think we need to sit back and look at the facts now because St. Martin has done a lot. St. Martin has went to the UN, St. Martin has taken them to court. Look at those facts and sit down and really see if we could fix it. Yes or no. We need to start talking about the functioning of it and stop taking plasters and putting plasters all over with something that's dysfunctional. It's not working. Only independence, um, I think Clyde von Putten stated it earlier to maybe um, consider becoming a, uh, now I'm losing the word, a commonwealth. You can, you can discuss that. If the countries decide they want to go independent, that can be an option too. But you need to first talk about head statute. What are we going to do with it? Are we going to change it? Yes or no? And based on that, based on the outcome of that, we need to then make decisions. We need to first decide if we're going to fix this, yes or no. It's 12 years, it's not working. We need to come with that. We need to sit down and be clear, to be honest with ourselves that it's not working. And I said it over and over in my speech, it is not working. What has opened the eyes of the community, again, going back, is the cohort discussion, because they felt it. They started to look at St. Martin, Aruba, and Chris. I started saying, but we have to cut, but why are they not cutting? Aren't we now part of a kingdom? That has opened a can of worms. The people are now, what's going on? I thought we were equal. I thought we were autonomous. Why are these people um, disrespecting our prime minister in St. Martin? Because we got our state, the state secretary, the then state secretary disrespected our prime minister, a state secretary who represents the prime minister of Holland. I mean, people are being more, they're open, they're seeing it now. And um, one thing we're not doing in St. Martin is stopping, is we're going to continue informing and educating the people on our rights. And the most important thing that I kept doing in St. Martin is to understand that we have three tiers of laws. You have your own cons constitution, you have the Kingdom Charter, which is our uh, statute, and you have international laws. And the statute was built to be in confirmation with the international laws. And the international laws 
it supersedes our laws, and that's what we have to be looking at, and that's the focus. I can tell you I have family and friends in Bonaire, especially Bonaire, and I can tell you I have friends in Stacia and Sabre, and the people themselves are not happy, and I speak to the people. They're the ones that feel it. That's the pulse you need to follow, not the main main media, mainstream media. I, wa I drove through Bonaire. I look at how one side of Bonaire is dilapidated, and the other side of Bonaire is beautiful, and who lives there? Hmm think about it. So, I mean, um, I don't look at the overall. I go straight to the grassroots. And as, as individuals, we need to, if you have family and friends living in these countries, pick up the phone, call them, ask them how things are going. Don't listen to the representatives that are representing them because it's kind of at sometimes it's a little miss of a misrepresentation because the people of Bonaire and the people of St Stacia for the, for sure they are not happy. Sabre I don't know much of but Sabre, Stacia and Bonaire they're not as happy as you think they are.